right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I'm your host, Chris Control. We are live from the 704 once again for episode 122 of the 815 Exchange. And well, 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 well. We finally got, we got, we got clipped. All right, we got clipped, but let's not get ahead of myself. Of course, I'm talking about USC. Um, but we're not the only team that got clipped. Chapel Hill. Um, not a great week for y'all, but we'll get to that also. Um, what happened in Chainsaw Man, by the way? Good Lord. So, something to talk about in entertainment, as well as Metro Boomin dropping one of, potentially one of my favorite projects of the year, uh, late here in December. Welcome to December, by the way, even though it was December. No, that's the first episode of December, right? Yeah, December 5th. So, um, yeah, welcome to December, last month of the year. It looks like it went by like this. Um, however, we are back. Another great week in sports and entertainment, plenty to talk about, a lot of interesting topics. So, uh, yeah, as always, remember to like, share, and subscribe. If you guys are enjoying the content, we're on the road to 900. And as always, as I always say, everything you were looking for, everything you desire can be found in the description, whether that's my social medias. You want to see me live the life of me in Charlotte. Or you just want to, you know, hear my sports takes or things about life. Social media links are provided or my handles are provided in the description. Along with timestamps. It's long form content. I get it. Feel free to skip ahead to whatever topic you want to if you need to. If you can't, you know, watch it all in one time. Feel free to skip ahead to whatever you're looking for. Whether that's the World Cup, whether that's college football, whether it's the NFL or whatever it is, the roundup. You know, feel free to skip ahead. Timestamps are provided in the description. Now... Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, you know what it is. This is no surprise. You know how we do this thing. If you've been around the block, we start off with college football. And unfortunately, that means I have to start off with something I really, unfortunately, have to start off with. And that's USC losing, all right? Finally, it happened. And it happened to no surprise to me, all right? We, we probably can rewrite the footage to last week and hear me say we were probably going to lose to Utah. Um... They, they're just, they just got a number. Kyle Whittingham is one of the best coaches in America. They've built a great program. Cam Rising just owns us. He does. He does. We just cannot beat them. We can't. For whatever reason, they got a number. Now, we can say for a variety of reasons they beat us this time. You know. And it's fair, you know. Unfortunately, Caleb got injured in multiple places. Hurt his hand, his throwing hand at that, and hurt his hamstring, but still fought through both of those, somewhat to the detriment of himself and I guess to the team, because the offense really not, you know, really wasn't able to ever recover after he got injured. So that ended up costing us the game after we started the game flying. I think it was 17 to 3 at one point in time. We were looking really good and yeah, then the wheels just fell off. Wheels just fell off. Defense just couldn't stop anything. They ran wild in that fourth quarter. It was just ugly. All right, Cam Rising finishes with 310 and three touchdowns. Jada Quinn Jackson with 105 and two touchdowns himself. Utah was all over. For as good as our offensive line is, it was horrid on Friday night. Um, yeah, seven sacks of Caleb. He got beat up all night. He got beat up. All right, simply put, he got beat up. 363 and three touchdowns, however, for Caleb, ultimately, it wasn't his best game, but it also wasn't, it, somehow, it wasn't his worst game of the season, um, but it was definitely below par for him, but I don't think it was enough, I know a lot of people, listen, Lamar Jackson in Louisville did not make the playoff, he won the Heisman, alright, it's not crazy for him to still be the Heisman front runner. he still played a good game, and he played with one leg and one hand, he still had 363 and three touchdowns, and was very, very good for the healthy portions of that game. Looked like the Heisman. For the portions in which he was healthy, he was dominant. So, uh, yeah, I still don't think that's a reason. And that's not me having a homer take. That's just straight up. I still don't see why that would displace him just because we lost the game. Um, the fingernail thing is not even really relevant for me to even talk about because he does it every game, so it's not really a big deal. Then again, I'm a UFC fan, so I've seen him do it multiple times, and it was not a big deal then. Do not care now, even though we lost. Um, Taj Washington, once again, has been one of the most improved receivers on the team. One of the most improved players on the team, in my opinion. Six receptions, 93 yards, and a touchdown in this game. He's become a reliable target for Caleb. But, like I said, Cam Rising, he is that dude. Simply put, he is that dude. Utah, they're going to the Rose Bowl. We are going to the Cotton Bowl to face Tulane. We'll get to Tulane. 
Kansas State takes out TCU. Now, two things needed to happen for potential chaos in the college football playoff. We had to lose, check. TCU had to lose. And potentially, just potentially, many people thought that even I had a little bit of a thought that maybe, just maybe, they might be so shameless to put Alabama in. Now, I didn't think it was going to happen, but I thought there was, there was a, a non-zero chance that they might screw over TCU if they lost the Big 12 championship. And well, what do you know? Kansas State gets it done in overtime, 31-28. to 28. Um, You know what? Well-deserved. As, as great as Sonny Dykes and TCU have been this year, and they would have been deserving, and we'll talk about Max Newman in that drive, but Deuce Vaughn has been one of my favorite players. Not just because we're the same height, all right, and he's a fellow short king. Not, not just that, but because he's, he's just been an underappreciated star of college football. He's been a star, a star at Kansas State. And I feel like he's gone a little bit under the radar for whatever reason, no pun intended. But, yeah, he's been a star. He's been one of the best running backs in America. He showed it off in the Big 12 Championship. He finishes with 130 and a touchdown for Deuce. Big Willie Howard, what can I say about him? I think he had 199 and two touchdowns, maybe three. But, uh, yeah, he's come through, filling in for Adrian Martinez. He's been great for Kansas State. Um, one of the big matchups was Brent, 6 for 3 corner versus Quentin Johnston. And uh, listen, Q won that matchup. Um, four receptions, 110 he finishes with. But Brent's did his, I mean, he did a solid job. It was a lot of PIs, and Q no doubt won it. But giving him credit, he wasn't, he did as about as well as anybody's done against Q all year. Uh, Max Dugan played garbage. He played like garbage for the first three quarters of this game. Three quarters and a half, you could dare say, of this game. Max Dugan was garbage. Respectfully. But when it mattered, he had a Heisman moment. Suddenly, TCU had life. After losing the game pretty much the entire time, Max goes on a 95-yard drive with him severely gassed, bleeding from his arm. He runs the ball, however many straight times, for 95 yards to tie the game and send it to overtime. I mean, dog. Absolute dog. Max dog. Alright, he's a dog. He's, he got that dog in him. I, I can't fault him. I can't hate. He's got that dog in him. He played like crap for the first three and a half quarters, but he showed up when it mattered. He finished with what? 361, two touchdowns. Not bad. Some people call him for Max Dugan to be Heisman. Unfortunately, um, yeah, they took the ball out of his hands on the goal line in overtime. That didn't really work out, even as great as Keandre Miller has been. Kansas State defenses shows up, and then Kansas State kicks a field goal. They win the Big 12 championship. Congratulations to the Wildcats. SEC championship, Georgia versus LSU. Um, yeah, this was a murder. This was a murder. It got better, actually, when Garrett Nussmeyer came in. So, shout out to Nuss. So, it got a little bit better. But this was, for all intents and purposes, this game was not this close. Uh, Stetson Bennett, master class. He becomes the oldest quarterback to ever win an SEC championship at 25 years old. Two yeah, 23 for 29. 274, four touchdowns. I've said it many times before in this podcast. I'm done down with Stetson Bennett. He is fine with me. He is all good and dandy. And so proven otherwise, I got nothing bad to say about Stetson Bennett. He can go. He's a national championship, national championship winning quarterback. I got nothing to say. He showed up again. Uh, Kendall Milton had one of the better games of his career. Man had single-digit carries and over 100 yards, 113 for Milton in this game. Somebody's going to have to show me why Mr. Carter is not the number one I mean, he might be better than Will. Or at least he's on that same tier as Will, in my opinion. You will have to prove to me why Mr. Carter is not potentially number one overall pick in this draft. With the quarterbacks in the shot. Unless you're, I mean, the Texans probably need a quarterback. So it probably makes more sense to take Bryce or probably I got maybe CJ. But I'd probably take Bryce. But, you know. You, you, Carter needs to be in consideration. Him picking up Daniels with one arm was ridiculous. 
Um, however, Daniels got knocked out of this game. Garrett Nussmeyer had to come in. Highly rated quarterback coming out of high school. He's been the backup. He showed up and showed out and really got them the 30 points and made this game look a lot closer than it was and really torched that Georgia secondary um, along with neighbors and Bouti. Welcome to the college football season, Kayshawn Bouti. Um, in that second half. So, yeah, shout out to Nussmeyer, 294, two touchdowns. Neighbor, like I said, five receptions, 128, and a touchdown. Keishon Boutte, six receptions, 107, and a touchdown for him. Harold Perkins did Harold Perkins things as well, 10 receptions, one and a half TFLs. But it was not enough. Georgia just simply on a different level. They were the number one team for a reason. Be terrified, Ohio State. Be very, very terrified. Tulane takes out UCF as they're fighting a partying gear from the AAC. 45 to 28, Pratt, what a game. 442 yards, five touchdowns for Pratt. He was a star. Spears has been great down the stretch as well. The running back, 199 and a touchdown for him. Watts goes three receptions, 124 and a touchdown. Um, Wyatt goes five receptions, 110, two touchdowns. They had six sacks of the various quarterbacks that UCF used in this game. Of course, they had to go with John Rice Plumley because Mikey Keene sent him to protect his red shirt for next year. Did not work out for UCF. Um, JRP did have 209 in the touchdown, but it just not the same team. They're just not the same team. Keene is the better quarterback. But I get it, even though it's like, yeah, it's a little bit of a, you know, you play your best players, but I understand. Um, however, Tulane is just a better team. What a turnaround. What a turnaround for Tulane. I think they were 2-10 and 10 or whatever last year, and here they are headed to the Cotton Bowl to face USC, who was nearly in the playoff. So, uh, yeah, hell of an honor. Hell of a team for Tulane. What a season. AAC champs. Michigan takes out Purdue 43 to 22. JJ McCarthy goes 161 and three touchdowns. Donovan Edwards, any questions about could he fool in for Blake Corum? I think after this in the game have been answered. 185 and a touchdown. Some even saying he might be a better draft prospect than Blake Corum. Now I'll let y'all discuss that. Um, AOC, and I'm not talking about the one in Congress. Um, once again, has another 300 yards in a, in a big game. He's a big game player. Unfortunately, he also threw two interceptions, and they ended up being very costly. Shout out to Will Johnson. He was a man possessed. Charlie Jones has 13 receptions, 162, um, pushing him well past the 1,000-yard mark. Purdue has just been on a solid stretch, by the way, of just really good receivers just over the past couple of years. So, uh, yeah, Charlie Jones looking like he's the next in uh, what is becoming a very long line of really good Purdue receivers. Um, but yeah, Michigan. What more can we say about Michigan? They, they have been that team. They have absolutely, undeniably been that team. Them versus TCU is going to be very, very exciting. It's going to be very interesting. Um, another high caliber opponent. Of course, I'd probably take Michigan going into that matchup with how TCU played and the fact that they just coming off of a loss. Um, and Michigan's just been that good. They've been that good here. They just, they've been that good. Aren't you glad you didn't fire Harbaugh? All right, ACC championship here in the 704. Two teams that were pretty much limping into this game, uh, Clemson and North Carolina. Now, I told you it was a horror weekend for North Carolina, and boy, oh boy, it was a horror. It's been a past couple of been garbage weekends, by the way, for it's just been bad in Chapel Hill. I mean, they're down horrendous, and it didn't get better on Saturday night in Charlotte. 39-10, Clemson gets it done. You know why? Because Big Cinco got benched. And Big Cinco has now entered the transfer portal. Cade Klubnik's era started, and it started with a bang in the ACC championship. Cade goes 309, 20 for 24, two touchdowns. He was the guy. He was the guy. He's, the, he's been the guy. He's, he was always going to be the guy. Dabble's stubbornness and, and him feeling that Cade was not ready is the only thing that prolonged this. Um, but yeah, Cade Klubnik, it's his team now. Of course, DJ, of course, literally into the transfer portal. I think he said to UCLA. That would be my prediction with his brother, um, if I had to guess. We'll see what happens, especially with DTR leaving. But, uh, yeah, Cade Klubnik, he is that guy. He is exactly who we thought he was. Jeremiah Trotter Jr., got to give a shout out because he was stunting like his daddy, as we say. Nine tackles, three sacks. Drake made through two picks. Um, ever since we started hyping him up for Heisman, he has not been that guy. Simply put, he has not been that guy, and he was not that guy on Saturday night. Clemson shows up, 
Clemson shows out. And they capture yet another ACC championship. They still run the ACC. Don't get it twisted. Despite everything, despite the failures this year, they still showed up and won the ACC championship. Model of consistency. Absolute model of consistency. Looks like a much better team with Cade under center. We'll see what they do in their bowl game against Tennessee in the Orange Bowl. A literal Orange Bowl. Of course, playoff, as you may have heard me mention. We got Georgia, Ohio State. We got Michigan and TCU. Of course, we'll do actual predictions when we get there. But, spoiler alert, I think I got Georgia and Michigan in the championship. All right, now let's go to the world stage. And by the world stage, I mean the World Cup. The World Cup. We have now entered the round of 16. Who is going to be quarterfinals right, of the World Cup? Starting off, USA survived their group. All right, we managed to beat Iran um, thanks to Christian Pulisic. Oh, wait, no. Who was it, Pulisic? No, Pulisic scored against... No, it was Pulisic, yeah. Yeah, Pulisic won again. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I was trying to remember because I know we didn't cover it last week because it happened. It ended up happening during the week, of course. But yeah, Pulisic, yeah. He gave up his groin for America. Yes. 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 Oh, man. Captain America. But anyways, brings us here against the Netherlands. Listen, you know, felt it was a, a manageable game. Didn't expect us to win. Felt it was a manageable game, and you know what? We fought. Unfortunately, we got knocked out. Netherlands gets the win 3-1. to one. We somehow neutralized Cody Gagpo, but instead of Cody Gagpo going off, it was Denzel Dumfries making himself some money in this game for the Dutch. All right? The man just, he, he was dominant. Defensively, he was dominant, and then he even got a role in this game with the same stoic face. I don't think I saw him smile once. Even when he scored, I don't think I saw him smile. Um, now, Memphis Depay opened up the scoring, and I think that was what really hurt us um, in the 10th minute. Uh, just can't give up a goal that early. Just can't. Just can't. We, we, we had a couple of lapses in defensive concentration in this game, and we didn't make the necessary adjustments, and I think that's ultimately what cost us this game. Um, and yeah, a lot of it was inexperience. And of course, we were the second youngest team in the World Cup this year. So no surprise that inexperience kind of ends up being our downfall. However, I'm still optimistic towards the future. I'm optimistic for 2026. Um, we got a great core. The trio, the three musketeers of Musai, Adams, and McKinney were fantastic. Even though they were a little bit gassed in that Netherlands game. Um, except for Adams and Musai, who were just the machines. Of course, Weston was injured going into this, but he was still solid. Um, but yeah, very excited. They're still very young. They'll still be entering really their prime in four years. So uh, yeah, still excited about that. Pulisic, we just need to get a striker. We need a striker. We need better defensemen. Matt Turner was amazing. All right, even though he let three pass, not really his fault. He was fantastic. I hope he gets some game time with Arsenal or somebody else in England. But yeah, overall, I mean, I'm satisfied with the American performance. And I'm very, very excited for 2026. Netherlands moves on. They were the better team. LVG is a great coach. You know, he's a legend for a reason. So, uh, yeah, we'll see what Netherlands can do next. Argentina takes out Australia. No real surprise here. Um, levels. Levels. Simply put, there are levels to be. And Argentina showed Australia levels. Messi with a goal. Julian Alvarez with a goal. Latoro Martinez should have scored, but unfortunately, he cannot hit the side of the barn. Okay? He couldn't hit the side of a barn. And not like a small barn, not like a, you know, like the barn outside your house where it's really just kind of like a, a dackish type thing. No, I mean like a big red barn that you see in like the children's books. He could hit that. He could hit that. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened to Latoro, but he, he was god awful in this game. However, it didn't matter. Um, in fact, the only Australian goal was an own goal. So Argentina completely dominated. Messi masterclass. They were. They were eating. It was a great game for them, but they were eating in the commentary, especially from the BBC. But, uh, yeah, Messi, Argentina, they move on as expected. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. All right. How many times have I said what I'm about to say? How many times have I tweeted what I've said what I'm about to say? This is not the first time, probably will definitely not be the last time I say these two words. Or actually, they're not two words. Or I say this phrase. All right. Kylian Mbappe is the best player in the world. He is the best player in the world. I'm standing on it now. 
I am, I've been standing on it, but I'm standing on it, especially right now after yesterday. He is the best player in the world. Simply put, cut and dry. He's the guy. Didn't mean to make that line, but you know what? I guess I had the time. Bars. Um, France takes out Poland, um, killing Mbappe on one. First off, he gets the assist on Giroud, who passed Henry for the all-time leading goal scorer in French history. So congratulations to that man, Olivier Giroud, one of the most underrated strikers of his time. But Mbappe gets the assist on that. Giroud, by the way, was fantastic in this game. Um, and then Poland looks a little bit threatening, having an insane couple of sequences of like goal line stoppets um, and clearances from France, you know, not allowing Poland to capitalize. And then Kylian Mbappe, he just took over. Simply, he just, he just took over the game um, with a couple of wonder strikes. First off, counterattack. You just can't mess with this French team on a counterattack, and especially not with Mbappe and Dembele. Dembele delivers it. Mbappe has all the time in the world to read a book. He takes three touches and fires a rocket, upper 90s. Um, and that was the first one. Then, 90th minute. Could Poland get it back together? Absolutely not. Ms. Badape is going to put the game away once and for all. He gets his brace with an iconic celebration by doing his signature cut back in, right foot, ridiculous curve, unstoppable, upper 90s again. Um, yeah, he's a monster. He's a monster. He's terrifying. Matty Cash played as solid as he probably can and still got torched. He is absolutely terrifying to me. I don't think there's a team on the planet that I would not take him or two would actively want to play this man. I don't think there's a country that would actively want to play France and Kylian Mbappe. He is a monster. And it's, it, it's, you know, it's not just the speed. It is the speed, but it's also the technique. And it's also another thing I've noticed. It's just the fact that it's not like he's a guy that burns out after like a half. Or like after maybe 60 minutes and it's like, okay, I survived this half, this 50 to 60, and I'm done. He, you know, burns out. He won't be as effective. You have to do this for 90 minutes. You have to mark him for 90 minutes. And hope to not make one mistake. We have seen him play some very average games, but it just takes one moment of magic, one opening, one glimmer of space, and it's done. Game change. He's a game-breaking player. And I, I, this Poland, I mean, this French team has been, for what they're dealing with in terms of injuries and how much they've lost, it's been a blessing in disguise, apparently, because they look just as good as they did four years ago. Raibol has been fantastic. Griezmann has been unbelievable. Toshimi on point. Defense is where they've looked a little shaky, even though they've been still solid. But a little shaky, Lelouis has not really been tested too much. But the front three, Dembele, Giroud, Mbappe, unstoppable. Unstoppable. I mean, I, I don't know, I really don't know how you defend them. Because you can double team him, which doesn't always work, right? You can double team Mbappe. And this goes for England, by the way. England beats him all. We'll get to that. You, you double Mbappe, right? You send two people at him. Sure. That'll work most of the time, maybe. Sometime. Because even then, he's beaten double teams. Right? But if you do that, try to take him out of the game. Try to frustrate him. You leave Giroud and you leave Dembele open. You don't want Dembele one-on-one -on -one with anybody. And you really don't want Giroud one-on-one -on -one with anybody. Because they'll burn you just as much as Mbappe will. Or Griezmann, or whoever will come up, it will burn you since you will be spending all your attention on killing it, and it'll just play on that side. And they'll burn you that way. I do not know. I don't know. I feel like you have to double them, but I feel like you're playing with fire. But it's kind of one of those things like in the NBA where it's like, all right, I'm not, I'm not going to let LeBron, I'm not going to let KD, I'm not going to let you know, Giannis, whatever. I'm doing everything I can to make their life a living hell, and whoever else is just going to have to beat us. And if they beat us, we're just going to have to shake their hand. But I can't let Kelly. That's the, literally the only way I can think of marking him right now. You cannot mark him one-on-one. -on -one. It is a suicide pact. 
it is a suicide pact. You will not, you will not make it out. He will put you in the grave if you try to mark him one on one. He is that dangerous. He is the best player on the planet. Five goals, two assists, golden ball, and golden boot leader in the clubhouse, Kylian Mbappe. Lua also got the goal for Poland. I mean, after a garbage penalty, he kind of got like a sympathy penalty. It was, it was, it was sad. Honestly, it was sad. But you know what? Poland played a solid game. France is just France. England takes out Senegal 3-0. This game was... Honestly, as soon as I tuned in, about the 37th minute, it was not close. They were flying. All right? Jordan Henderson got on the board first. Then Harry Kane got on the board. Then Saka got on the board. Saka's been great, by the way, in this World Cup. Uh, so is Drew Bellingham. Besides that one game against us, he's been fine. Um, but yeah, Drew gets two assists. The youngest English player with two assists since the 60s. Um, in the World Cup, so yeah, Jude, probably going to be one of the best midfielders, I think Foden said he was going to be the best midfielder in the world one day, and I would not be shocked, he is that good, um, yeah, England versus France is going to be an interesting one, that's going to be a really good game, really good game, because England has the midfield and the attacking to keep up with them, I know everybody keeps saying Kyle Walker, Kyle Walker was getting burnt by Ismail Saar, I would not be that confident in Kyle Walker, not against this Mbappe. So they got to figure something out defensively, and France has to figure out something defensively. But I think we got a must-watch game between England and France, in my opinion. And that would be interesting. Croatia and Japan are actually on right now, so I couldn't tell you. But you'll know by the end of the day um, who advanced between them. Is the Blue Lock still going on, or did Croatia get it done? And they're making another run here in the World Cup. We'll see, but man, it's been a good, good, good World Cup. Entertainment. What in the world happened in Chainsaw Man? I have been, I have been hoodwinked, I have been led astray, I have been flat out deceived. I thought this was just my, my, you know, weekly, I just go and watch Denji be down bad, have some laughs, you know, it's, you know, everybody's, you know, acting up, you know, on, on this show, it's all good fun, eventually he comes. He breaks out the chains, he slices up some devils, whatever, da 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 That's what I thought the show was. And then episode 8 happens, and they killed everybody. Like, this is Game of Thrones. <laughs> what in the world? This ain't no HBO show. What just happened? Everybody is dead. They killed everybody. All right? Except for Power, Denji, and Aki. All right, those are the only ones we know for sure are not dead. Himaneo and, and Denji fix things up, right? They, they fix things up. They start this pack, right? She's going to help him get Makima. He's going to help her get, you know, Aki. You know, we're all good. You know, she didn't take advantage of him, blah, 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 blah. Himaneo back up to best girl. And then she dies by some snake devil or whatever she is. And... I don't know what to call him, Blade Man, not Chainsaw Man, or Sword, I don't know. But they murk. Murk my girl. Snake, I mean, just, just, just straight up walked up, murked her, no questions. Khan even got worked. For Aki, Aki used a sword, that didn't kill off them. Makima got, got assassinated. The other two got assassinated. Who, anybody is dead. What happened? This is not the way this show was supposed to go. This is not what I was led to believe this was what this was. This was not what these first episodes were about. What just happened? Everybody, they introduced the team, made you fall in love with the team, and then killed them. It was brilliant, all right? Even though it was heartbreaking, absolutely brilliant. I mean, I was already hooked, but now it's like, what happens next? It's taking all my power to not read the manga or look at spoilers and get spoiled because I'm just like, I'm in disbelief. All right, I'm in disbelief of what happened. But yeah, Chainsaw Man, everybody is dead. Metro Boomin, heroes and villains. All right, heroes and villains. He dropped the album Long Awaited. Um, Standouts, Superhero Feet Future and Breezy, Umbrella Feet 21. Around me, I think that was Don on that one. Um, again, feature list was absolutely crazy. The production was absolutely crazy. With Metro being one of the 
greatest producers of his time. Um, I'm not gonna lie, this was this was near ten, very much so near ten. Early on in the first listen, I haven't gotten around to the second listen, so this is still pending and could change. I'm gonna give it a nine point. I'm gonna give it a nine point three. I'm gonna give it a nine point three. So album of the year contender, and it could rise higher than that, depending on second listen. But for now, I'm gonna give it a nine point three. Just letting everything settle in. I don't want to overshoot it, but I, you know, I don't want to undershoot it. I still want to give it the appreciation it deserves. It's still one of the best albums I think of the year. Um, yeah, in quarter four. So shout out to Metro. He delivered. Simply put, he delivered. Features fantastic. I mean, the the features fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Um, and you, for some reason, you have not listened to this album. Go do yourself a favor and go listen to this album. It was that good. It's got the official co-sign for me. Also this week, 21 Savage, been a busy, busy boy. Uh, one Mick, One Gun, featuring Nas, very good. Cool way to resolve that, even though he was not trying to disrespect, because let's be honest, Nas is not particularly... See, I'm not going to say it, because I'll get in trouble. But he didn't really say nothing too wrong, but anyways, they hop on the track together, they get it all fixed up, blah, blah, blah. And we got a great song out of it. Go listen to it if you haven't. Nas is obviously one of the greatest rappers to ever pick up a mic. And 21 Savage, of course, is one of the best in the world today. So, uh, yeah, go listen to that. One make one gun. Very, very good. That's how you resolve conflict. All right, the NFL, okay? The NFL, the National Football League. Starting off with the Patriots and the Bills, all right? The Bills, Thursday night. First game of December, by the way. Um... Yeah, not particularly um, the most exciting game, not particularly the most close game, but uh, yeah, pretty much controlled by the Bills, not going to say and lie to you. All game, uh, Josh Allen gets back on track, 223, two touchdowns, digs, seven receptions, 92 yards, and a touchdown. It was the usual Bills performance, all right? It was, it was pretty much the usual Bills, them getting back on track. Patriots didn't do anything crazy. Mac Jones was, I guess, Mac Jones, you know, under 200 yards. Might throw a touchdown in here or there. Um, but, yeah, nothing too crazy. Bills get it done. Uh, yeah. For some reason, by the way, they had not won in the division yet. So, uh, yeah, first win in the division for the Bills somehow um, in week 13. But, yeah, they're still 9 and 3. Business as usual. Boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Um, the Cowboys beat the brakes off of the Colts. 54 to 19. This game was actually pretty close to start. It, 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 believe it or not, this game was actually somewhat close at the start. Um, however, it did not finish. It did not finish that way. We took off. All right, this game was, I mean, like I said, it was pretty close to start. Um, I mean, going into halftime, it was 21 to 13. In fact, the Colts in the third quarter, Heading into the fourth, it was 21 to 19. But then I don't know what, you know, divine intervention happened. I don't know if it was a speech from McCarthy. I don't know what it was, but the Cowboys just decided that we were going to win this game. At some point in time, we just decided that we were going to win this game, and there was pretty much nothing that was going to stop us. Um, we scored one, two, three, four, five unanswered touchdowns in this game and could not be stopped. Just could not be stopped. Um, Dak Prescott goes 20 for 30, 170, but three touchdowns in this game. Pollard has 91 yards, two touchdowns. He was sublime. Um, and yeah, Cowboys just balled out, man. Balled out. Zeke with 77 yards. He got a touchdown. Um, we rushed for 220 in total. The defense showed up. We had three sacks. Bland with two picks. Um, yeah, simply put, I mean, just completely dominated this game in the fourth quarter after what was a solid, very, you know, competitive game going into the fourth. We just went to another level. I won't complain. I won't complain. For some reason, ESPN thinks we're going to the Super Bowl, so, you know, I'm not buying into that yet. But you know what? It feels good. It feels good to be a winning team. The Steelers get it done versus the Falcons 19-16. to Um, close game all the way. Uh, however, the Falcons just... I mean, regress back to the mean. Every time they look like they have some semblance of hope, some semblance of credibility, some semblance of, all right, this team might be decent, they just regress back to the mean. There's, no, there's nobody in the, in the league, 
quite, I mean, nothing in the league quite like the NFC South. And those teams just regressing back to mediocrity. I mean, they're in love with it. They are in love with it. But the Steelers get the win on the road. Um, Najee Harris finishes with 86 yards. But, I mean, this was just a great defensive performance. Um, Mika Fitzpatrick with a pick. Um, and, yeah, Falcons not pretty. Packers take out the Bears. Listen, I guess no matter how long, no how many years go by, no matter which players, no matter the record, no matter what it is, Aaron Rodgers will always, always run Chicago. He will always own the Chicago Bears. And it is no different here. It is no different here. Bears, congratulations on the top five pick. You simultaneously show, you know, made some strides, but also are three and ten are a garbage, garbage, mediocre, I mean, medi mediocre football team. Um, and you lost to another mediocre team because you made the Packers look competent in this game. But you always seem to do. Aaron Rodgers against his favorite team goes 18 for 31, winning 82 and two touchdowns. But boy, oh boy, did him and Christian Watson close this game when it mattered. Christian Watson is now at eight touchdowns. Yes, not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven, but eight touchdowns in the past four weeks. It's getting out of hand. The man might win offensive rookie of the year off of playing half of a year. It is ridiculous. All right, he had a 46-yard carry for a touchdown. He also caught one. The man does nothing but score touchdowns. He has shown to be a great draft pick so far for the Packers and is only getting better. But, uh, yeah, maybe y'all finally got the boys some help. Justin Fields led the Bears in the rushing this week, and that is always not going to be good. Okay, 55-yarder accounted for most of his 71 yards. He did have a touchdown on that 55-yarder. However, he did throw two picks. Um, like I said, Packers run Chicago. Aaron Rodgers is still the king of the... He's the king of Chicago, man. What kind of, he owns the Bears. Literally owns the Bears. No matter what. No matter how bad they're playing. You can just count on it. Just like the Patriots and the Jets. You can count on Bill Belichick beating the Jets. You can count on Aaron Rodgers beating the Chicago Bears. The Lions beat the bejesus out of the Jaguars. Um, they put the fear of God into every Jaguars fans when they rolled up on Trevor Lawrence's leg and looked like he had broke in multiple different positions and looked like, oh boy, not what you needed to see. Ultimately, this and of course the defense just not showing up in general cost the Jaguars the game. Um, they showed a little bit of life in that second half, but they was just too far gone. Lions with their most complete game easily this season. 31 for 41, 340 for Goff, looking like an actual number one overall pick. Amon Ross St. Brown, what more can we say about the boy? Fight on, 11 receptions, 114, and two touchdowns. Swift, even, listen, even though Williams did get his vulture touchdown, even Swift got in the box this week for the Lions. So, uh, yeah, all good. Um, Lawrence, like I said, came back in after halftime. Wasn't too bad, but, uh, yeah, it just, it just wasn't there. Just a, a bad performance defensively. Could not stop that Lions offense and, you know, couldn't get any real rhythm going offensively. Lions dominate. They get the win. The Vikings continue to move up on 10-2. Uh, I think they still got the number one seed. Or at least they're tied. Or maybe one behind. Uh, the Eagles. I think they're one behind. The Eagles are one loss. So, yeah. Vikings take care of the Jets um, at home. Greg Joseph and Greg Zerline, the two Gregs, had a field goal competition essentially in this game. Um, I mean, we're just trading field goals. 41-yarder. Then Zerline hit a 60-yarder inside the franchise record for the Jets before halftime. Then he responds with a 36-yarder, a 30-yarder, a 26-yarder. I mean, Greg the leg was in fine form. Fine form in this game. Uh, Alexander Madison had one of the most sus celebrations you will probably see all season. Um, and Mike White, for all of his brilliance last week, was not as brilliant this week due to interceptions. However, he did have to throw the ball 57 times, which might not be a winning formula for the New York Jets. However, the Vikings get the win. Jets are out of the box. You know what this is. Commanders and the Giants tie. Thank you. Appreciate that. Just makes this, you know, wild card, you know, birth. Just that, that more ease. Just that much more easier um, and that much more less stress-free as we try to catch the Eagles in this last stretch of the season. But the Commanders and the Giants both did not want to win this game late and did not win this game. Um, Jahan Dotson called a high key touchdown with less than two minutes to go to tie it, and that was the last scoring we would see for the rest of the game because it was just a series of unfortunate events and mistakes in that, over, in that pitiful, pitiful overtime period. 
Um, however, Heineke goes 275 and two touchdowns. DJ goes 25 for 31. Fishing day, 200 yards and a touchdown. Scary Terry, eight receptions, 105 and a touchdown. B-Rob has been good since he got back, you know, from the incident. He's been solid. He had 96 yards in this game. Um, they had four sacks of DJ. DJ, um, solid game, but Saquon Barkley only having 60 yards is going to be a problem when you want to win games. It's going to be a problem. And, uh, yeah, ends with a tie, like I said. Good for the Cowboys, good for the Eagles. Not too great for the Commanders and Giants, but they'll take it. The Eagles, speaking of them, take out the Titans 35-10, make another statement. 11-1. Not what I expected from this team, but boy, oh boy, they, they look real. They look real. We already said the Eagles were real, but they looked real in this game against a good Titans team. Um, they shut down Derrick Henry defensively. Um, they had a good pass rush on Tannehill. And Jalen Hurts, once again, is still operating at an MVP level. 29 for 39, 380, and three touchdowns. A.J. Brown had the revenge game of revenge games against the Titans. That man was playing like this was personal. Eight receptions, 119, and two touchdowns. Devontae Smith, of course, continues to be 1B. Five receptions, 102, and a touchdown, and I mean that as a compliment. This Eagles team is dangerous. They are a Super Bowl contender. When that defense is playing that well, with the offense firing all similar as it has been all season, they are a dangerous team. As much as that pains me to say, they are a dangerous team and need to be considered a Super Bowl contender. They are real. All right, they're as real as it gets. The Ravens take out the Broncos 10-9. This game was not pretty. I mean, we had four field goals and then Tyler Huntley with the go-ahead win. The biggest story was Lamar Jackson got injured in this game. Apparently, it's not season ending. Don't know exactly how long LJ will be out, but he will be out for an indefinite amount of time. The Broncos continue to just, I mean, there's, there's nothing good to say about the Denver Broncos. There's, there's nothing good I can say about the Denver Broncos. And you know, what, you know what they always say when you're younger? If there's nothing good to say, they don't say anything at all. And there was nothing good to say about this game. And there's nothing good to say about that franchise currently. The bro, oh boy, oh boy. All of the revenge games, by the way, this week. So shout out to the, the, the schedulers. Deshaun Watson returned this week, right? Returned this week for the Cleveland Browns. Of course, they took on the worst team in the league, his former team, the Houston Texans. Um, what about as you expect? Deshaun, very, very rusty, still working out the kinks. He threw an interception to much of the joy of the world and did not look good. However, the Houston Texans are, in fact, the Houston Texans, and Kyle Allen is their starting quarterback, so they didn't do too great either. All right, once again, C.J. Stroud, Bryce Young, you are a Houston Texan. And you know what? The way the Texans operate, maybe even Will Levis. They'll test well. They'll probably, you know, decide to, I, I don't know. I don't, they, they probably would. I wouldn't count it out. But anyways, the Browns get the win 27-14. Um, yeah. Again, not the, the prettiest game. Uh, a pick six and a punt return. And I just thought a lot of great defensive performance from the Browns. I think they dropped 31 points in fantasy this week. So, uh, yeah. An incredible defensive performance, but the Texans are garbage. You know this. Um, Seahawks and the Rams. In college football, we talked about teams that made great turnarounds going from worst to first. Tulane, even USC, but don't get them with the championship. The Los Angeles Rams did the opposite. All right, they went from first to the absolute worst. All right, they get murked at home yet again. This time to the Seattle Seahawks. Um, DK Metcalf versus Jalen Ramsey was very entertaining, and DK was pretty much winning that matchup most of the game. Geno Smith I, has been solid. He's looked like a competent starting quarterback this year. So I wouldn't be shocked if they stuck with him, at least as a bridge, because he has looked like a solid starting quarterback. 367 and three touchdowns for Geno. Like I said, DK Metcalf, he loves playing the Rams and loves playing Jalen Ramsey. Eight receptions, 127 and a touchdown. Got to give, so give a shout out to Tyler Lockett. Nine receptions, 128 and a touchdown for him. They nearly matched. I just realized they nearly matched the stat line. That's crazy. Um, two picks, four sacks um, of Wolford in this game. As Gino looked like a solid starting quarterback, Wolford did not. Okay, he did not. This Rams team is dead in the water. They sold everything to win the championship. They got the ring. They probably won't complain, but they are not going to be good, apparently, for a very, very, 
very long time because I think it's a rebuild time for the Los Angeles Rams. Seahawks get it done. 49ers take out the Dolphins. Yes, you read that right. The 49ers took out the Dolphins 33-17. to Nick, Nicholas Bosa. Nick Bosa. My God. Was, was a man unchained. It was, it was like, it was like watching, I mean, he's been a man unchained all year. He's a defensive player of the year candidate for a reason, but the man was just on one. By the way, the 49ers, Jimmy Garoppolo knocked out of this game. They had a dope Brock Purdy in there, and you know what? Brock held it down. So shout out to Brock Purdy, because Brock Purdy went in, he showed up, and you know what? He looked good. He looked like Iowa State Brock Purdy. I mean good Iowa State Brock Purdy. He ends up with two 10 and two touchdowns. McCaffrey did McCaffrey things in this game, right? Eight receptions, 80 yards, and a touchdown receiving. 66 yards rushing. Tua, as much as I've seen his praises this year, he was not good in this game. Two picks, inefficient. It just wasn't his game. Cheetah goes nine receptions, 146 and a touchdown. A lot of that due to that long touchdown he had um, that 45 yarder to start off the fourth quarter. But after that, um, yeah, just took off. 40 yards just took off. Um, Dre, Green, Dre Greenlaw, 23 yard fumble return to put the game away with two minutes to go to end any semblance of a comeback. An impressive win for the 49ers. They go to 8 and 4. The Dolphins, you know, a little bit of a humbling experience if I say so myself. The Cincinnati Bengals. The king in the north is back. I said he was back two weeks ago. It may have been three, but officially he is back. The Cincinnati Bengals are back. It took a little bit, but they are back. I wasn't so sure about them going into this game, but you know what? They went in, handle business. The king in the north, Joe Burrow, Joe Burrow, Joe Shiesty, all right? Joey Championships, Joey Heisman. Joe Burrow, King of the North, showed up, showed out, 25 for 31, 286, two touchdowns. He's him. Jamar Chase also returned in this game. He's also still him. Seven receptions, 97 yards, and no touchdowns. Somehow, some way for Jamar Chase, even though it felt like he was everywhere in this game. That LSU team, by the way, just another semblance. But what Jenna's done, Jamar coming back just as seamlessly. The way Burrow's been playing, unbelievable. Unbelievable team. Um, P. Ryan goes over 100 yards in this game. Mahomes, nullified, pretty much nullified in this game. No 300 yards, no emphatic stat lines, no MVP candidacy. Not a statement game for him today, all right? That was not going to happen. The Bengals defense showed up, made the necessary adjustments throughout the game, kept pace with that Chiefs offense, and, you know, kept them. Held Kelsey in check in this game, which was very, very important, and the King of the North did work. Chase came back. Bengals looking dangerous again. And... To end off, the Raiders took on the Chargers, and you know what? The Chargers, the epitome of a 6-16. The epitome. All right, the epitome of mid. I've said it before. I'll say it again. And once again, they were mid. Um, yeah, the Raiders, playing a lot better recently. Um, so i got to give them credit because I've slammed them through the mud. You know, I've dragged them throughout this season. But you know what? They're playing better. A big reason is Josh Jacobs has been brilliant. 144 yards and a touchdown. Josh Jacobs, he has been that guy recently. He's looked like the star running back he is supposed to be. Devontae Adams has been a star all season. It never stops. He's arguably the best receiver in the country, in the world. All right, he's, he's Devontae Adams. Eight receptions, 177, two touchdowns. Chargers couldn't cover him with their life. Uh, Keenan had six receptions, 88 yards, and a touchdown for the Chargers. Herbert had 335 yards and a touchdown. He honestly had a very C.J. Stroud-esque game, if I say so myself. But the Raiders were the Raiders, um, and they showed up. They were the good version of the Raiders that we've seen the past couple weeks. Josh Jacobs, again, has been a man on chain. That offense has been kind of unlocked. The defense showing up, making stops when they need to be made. And again, the Chargers have been made all year. So the Raiders get the win at home in Vegas. They keep it rolling. And, ladies and gentlemen, with that said, we have reached the roundup. And before, all right, because I didn't put this in the official notes for a reason, but before I get to UNC being down bad in basketball and combat sports, it's a pretty big round up. Um, then I talk about some college football, should have talked about it there. Coach Prime headed to Colorado, all right? A lot of discussion about this. Um, he's fake, you know, he used Jackson State and the HBCU thing. Get out of here. 
He did amazing things in his three years here at Jackson State. He did incredible things for that program. I mean, did everything he could. Won two championships, brought them relevancy, brought them the best talent. He did every, I mean, he did wondrous things. He, he put them on the map again and brought a lot of attention to HBCU football. So I don't want to hear that he used blah, 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 blah. His intentions were clear from the start. I don't know if y'all, I, I guess y'all thought he was going to be Joe Paterno or whatever and stay there for 40 years or whatever, but Jackson State has not, you know, matched, let's be real, has not matched the investment Dion has. Maybe, you know, from a support, but support is more than just you acting, you know, I mean, more than just you saying. You also have to act, and Jackson State hasn't acted, let's be real. They haven't completely acted. We had the thing earlier in the year with the lockers and just not having water and just the necessary improvements to make them a competitive, a truly sustainable competitive program. Besides just him and the culture he brings, it was not there. It was not there. So I don't want to hear any complaints, to be completely honest. I, I, I really don't. I, I really don't. He moves to Colorado, which I was like, eh, I don't know how it's going to work as a fit. But you know what? Boulder apparently is an incredible city. Colorado has been very good before. By the way, if you were alive in the 90s, if you're a 90s baby, you would know. If you follow college football for an extended period of time, you would know. Colorado has not always been as bad as they are in perhaps Coach Pine and what he can bring in terms of building a program, building a culture, and motivating his players, which are three things he does very, very well, regardless of what you think about his X and O's. Um, and about the gimmick or whatever. Um, he does those things very well, and Colorado needs that. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. You know, with UCLA and UCS and USC leaving out, that opens up windows in the Pac-12 for, you know, teams to, you know, grow and become bigger and potentially take over those spots. So, uh, yeah, honestly, not too bad. It will be interesting to see um, what goes on next year and what that team. Of course, it will be probably one of the biggest stories of the offseason. But, yeah, Coach Prime to Colorado. Carolina is down horrendous. Football, we saw, lost in the ACC championship. They have now lost four straight games in basketball. They are going to go from number one to unranked. Number one to unranked. Y'all did everything y'all could to beat us, and I guess Coach K put a curse on y'all because y'all have been awful this year. And that's not me hating because I'm a Duke fan. Y'all just suck. And y'all would say that too. Your fans would say that too because you have. Y'all suck. And it's not just that y'all suck because I hate y'all, it's just y'all suck. All right, y'all suck. You lost four straight. It's inexcusable when you brought back, except for Brady Manic, your entire team. You brought back your entire team that made the national championship. Beat Duke, did all this stuff. Y'all should be mopping the floor with everybody, and you are mediocre right now. Garbage. Straight. So, we'll see, but UNC packing the air right now because they've lost four straight. AD has been on fire. We have been, I mean, once again, another team. I'm doing reparations, I guess, this week. Because uh, Lakers, no slander this week, no slander on AD. Anthony Davis drops 55-17 and 17 yesterday against the Wiz. He has been a, oh, unstoppable the past 10 games. He has been unstoppable. He's looked like the top five player in the world, Anthony Davis, that we saw, you know, during their championship run. He's looked like that type of AD, and that's going to be important for the Lakers going forward if they want to make any type of noise. Darvin Ham starting to settle in. I think the Lakers' chemistry is starting to build. It's trying to grow that confidence. It was a rough start, but you know what? They seemingly are getting together, and a big reason why is AD. If they want to keep it going, AD has to be AD, and he is AD right now. Monster game versus the Wizards. Boxing, combat sports, all right? Tyson Fury takes out Derek Chisora. No surprises. TKO. Beat the brakes off that boy. Um, Alexander Usyk is next um, for Undisputed. Thank God. Even though Joey Joyce showed up out of nowhere and was one of the smoke too. Give us the Undisputed fight we want. Give us the, the fight we desire. Please. Wilder Joshua, by the way, if we can get that going too. That would that'd be cool too. But uh, yeah, Fury works just sore. No surprise. Usyk probably up next. Wonder Boy works. Kevin Holland. Uh, yeah, Wonder Boy. Not, not watched yet. Not your average 40 year old fighter, okay? Completely work Kevin Holland, beat the brakes off that boy. Um, Sergey Pol uh, yeah, Pavlovich is a problem in that heavyweight division. I have not seen Ty get his kicked the way that he got beat by Pavlovich in some time. I mean, he looked like he went through a five round war and he got KO'd in 50 seconds. 
or excuse me, not 50 seconds, but in round one. I mean, he butchered Ty. Butchered him. So, uh, yeah, Sergey, one to look forward to in that heavyweight division. We'll see how Ty responds and how he comes back. Overall, kind of a stacked fight in that card, but um, yeah, Wonderboy works Holland, Pavlovich, KOs Ty in brutal fashion. Fairy works Chisora, and UNC is down bad, and that is the roundup. And that, with that said, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of episode 122. I hope you guys enjoyed, but without further ado, Ocho, signing off.